To check if your laser is collimated, put the laser in the focuser. Do not tighten the focuser eyepiece locking screws. Push in slightly on the laser to hold it flush against the focuser tube and rotate the laser in the focus tube. While spinning the laser, look at your primary mirror and watch the laser beam. I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm showing you a good laser now. The reflection of the laser on the primary mirror should not move. The reflection of the laser doesn't have to be in the center of the primary mirror. You haven't collimated yet. But regardless of where the laser is, it should stay exactly there when you rotate the laser in the focus tube. This is a view looking down the telescope tube. You see the primary mirror with a properly collimated laser spinning in the focuser tube. The laser beam is stationary. Now I'll show you a bad laser. You have to look carefully to see that this bad laser is moving when it is spun in the focuser. Still, this small movement is enough to throw off your collimation. This laser should be rejected and or recollimated. Here is an ugly laser. The beam moves significantly when the laser is spun. The laser is unusable as it is now. A good laser like Farpoint's will be collimated out of the box and it will stay collimated. All Farpoint lasers have a lifetime guarantee. If it ever loses collimation, return to us and we will collimate it for free. But if you have some other laser and it is miscollimated, you can do a reasonably good job of collimating it yourself. In any event, a miscollimated laser is worthless, so you have nothing to lose. Farpoint lasers have the tightest and most easily read beam on the market. Farpoint lasers have an aperture of 0.76 millimeters or 31 thousandths of an inch. We have experimented with larger and smaller apertures and this is the size that produces the tightest beam with the least speckling. Okay, I went looking around the office at Farpoint for a cheap miscollimated laser and of course I couldn't find one. found a lot of interesting ones. This is our standard red Farpoint laser. We f find that the red color works best for when you're looking for the return beam on the face of the laser, strangely the red beam shows up best with less speckling on, on the red laser. But we have silver lasers, purple lasers, there's a blue laser with a green beam, but they're all well collimated. This is my personal Howie Gladder laser that I've had for 15 years and, and it's a good laser too. I haven't got anything bad to say about the Howie Gladder lasers. Well, I do have a slight preference for the far point, and I'll show you why, but there's nothing wrong with the Howie Gladder lasers at all. To collimate them, we'd put them in a jig like this, and we would lock it down in a vise very tightly so it can't move at all. Then we'd take the laser and go ahead and stick it in, lock down in the vise, and turn on and spin it and watch the laser hit a wall at 80 feet away, and we mark exactly where the laser is, then we spin it and it, it should not move from that location. So if the laser is dead on at 80 feet, it's going to be just absolutely perfect at your typical collimation distance of 4 to 8 feet, maybe 12 feet. If you have a scope with a uh, focal length of more than 80 feet, let us know and we'll try to rig something up for you. So again, if your far point laser comes out of collimation for any reason, just mail it back to us and we'll collimate it for you for free. You'll have to do something drastic. We had one dropped off a 12 foot ladder and it was still collimated, although the battery cap broke off and that needed to be replaced. The far point lasers hold collimation very well because they have two screw holes, top and bottom, going around, two more, two more, so eight holes going around, so top and bottom it, it's held in place by screws, top and bottom going around. The Howie Gladder laser, like I said, I've had this for 15 years, it's still in great collimation, but it only has four holes and they alternate bottom, top, bottom, top, and even with just that it, it still stayed in, in good collimation. Some of the cheaper lasers are, are not tightened down as well and some of them may only have three holes and you can tell with three holes it's still going to allow it to wiggle around. So some of those cheap lasers come out of collimation quite easily. The other reason I prefer the far point laser is that the aperture here is smaller than it is on the Howie Gladder laser. I think Howie's changed it but his are, are still, still bigger. They both work fine but I get a little bit finer beam out, out of the far point laser. But anyway when we go to collimate these if you don't have a jig like this that you can use, you can rig something up um, 
I've seen all sorts of ideas on, on the internet, people putting on a block of wood with nails stuck in it or locking it down an old focuser to anything that you can lock the laser down and have it not move but still be able to spin. And so you project the laser down a, as far away as you can, a nice uh, 80, 100 feet is good, and, and spin it and the laser beam shouldn't move. If it is moving, then you might want to mark a arbitrary 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock location on the laser so you can figure out which of the collimation screws you're going to have to tighten and loosen in order to move the beam back into collimation.